Mox Game Design February 2023 SVG Scalable Vector Graphics Hello everyone, this is Knox Game Design for February 2023, so yeah, this is, I believe, the last day of February, so definitely recording this in February, not sure if I'll actually get it edited and posted uh, by the end of the month, but yeah, this month I'll be talking about uh, SVG, Scalable Vector Graphics, so I, I think I alluded to this last month when I was talking about JavaScript, but uh, SVG is a way you can make graphics that l l look well when you scale up and scale down, uh, not pixelated, not raster graphics. It's all def defined by the shapes themselves. So just a short overview. Uh, it's format uh, for vector-based graphics. Uh, it's XML. It looks a lot. A lot of the properties are like cascading style sheets, CSS. So if you know CSS, uh, this will be somewhat familiar. So you got commands for drawing lines, rectangles, circles, curves, and other things. And the nice thing is you can embed these SVGs directly into a web page or uh, probably even into your game. Um, I, I didn't go out and check to see which uh, game engines supported SVG, but I think a lot, some of them do, I'm not sure if all of them do. Uh, so the one nice thing about SVG is it retains the sharpness when you zoom in and zoom out. If you have a sprite or not a sprite, but an image and it, and you scale it up, it's going to retain the sharpness around the lines and the edges and things like that. Whereas if you have a pixel based sprite, then you're really going to notice the pixelation. Kind of like similar to true type fonts. As you get closer in, then they retain their sharpness. Um, yeah, so it's all tag based. Like I said, a lot like XML. Uh, I'm not sure if it's technically XML, but it looks a lot like it. Um, you can use any text editor, VI, Emacs, Visual Studio Code, Notepad++, whatever you want to use. Um, like I said, you can embed it in your web JavaScript games, displayed in a browser. So I'll be showing some examples of creating SVGs and how to embed those in a web web page. And as I said, it's very similar to cascading style sheets if you ever use CSS for styling a web page. So here's the basics. Uh, first of all, uh, you open it up with a an, an XML tag, an HTML, I think it's SVG, I can't remember. But uh, yes, yeah, the SVG tag, you specify a width and a height. Here I'm doing 640 by 480. And you can set different styles, similar, like I said, to CSS. Here we're setting the background color to cyan, which is hexadecimal 00FFFF. And then you can close it with a closing SVG tag slash SVG within angled brackets, and you really don't need to put anything in between the opening and closing tag. Uh, so I'll go ahead and see if I'm gonna show an example. So I do have Visual Studio Code here. Yeah, so here's Visual Studio Code, like I say, an HTML body. All we need is an open HTML open body, then our SVG tag right here, the width and height property, and the background color. So once we open that in a, a web browser, it just gives us a blue, a blue block to work with. So that's the start of our SVG right there. Okay, so here's how to draw a simple line. Um, you set the attributes, uh, you, you basically set, you use the line tag, and then you set the X1, Y1, the starting point, and then X2, Y2 for the ending point, then the stroke color. Stroke color may be optional. I think you just get black if you don't set the stroke color. Um, yeah, so you can also set different properties of the line, such as stroke width, the width of the line, uh, and then another one is like stroke dash array. You can have it dotted or dashed or dots and dashes, kind of like Morse code. <laughs> um, so that's what you see here at the bottom. The first one is just a skinny black line. I guess it's one pixel, about one pixel in, in size. Uh, it is aliased, so uh, or anti-aliased, so it, do, it, it it doesn't look jagged or anything. The second line is a has the stroke width of eight, so it's it's eight pixels in width. Uh, the third line is also eight pixels in width. 
but at, you can specify a stroke line cap, stroke dash line cap, and say round so it has rounded ends, which is pretty nice. Uh, the fourth line here is green, so we uh, specify zero zero eight zero 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 for the stroke color, or just the stroke property, and that sets it to dark green, half green. And it has a width of four, and we have the stroke dash array. So we're going to say uh, it's going to be four pixels long, and then there's going to be a space for four pixels, and then it just repeats that. So you get a dotted line here. And then the final one, uh, we set the stroke to blue, 0000, zero, zero, zero FF, uh, with strokes width of four. And for this stroke dash array, we're going to set it to eight pixels long then a two pixel space, and then we're going to do four pixels long, and then a two pixel space. So it's kind of like a dash, dot, dash, dot, dash, dot. So uh, you just use how many pixels you want for the line, then the next one's a space, then the next one's the next line, then the next one's the next space. Then after you run out, then it just starts repeating itself. So let's go back here and line. So this is the exact same thing that's on the on the slide here, but it's in Visual Studio Code. So you see it embedded in the HTML file right here. So we've got one, two, three, four, five lines. Then if we open up a web browser and look at the second one. So here it is right here. We've got the skinny line, the thick line, the red line with the cap, the dotted green line, and the dash dot dash dot blue line. So the next one, next shape we're going to look at is circles. So for a circle you use the circle tag, <laughs> open angle bracket, then circle. And these have three attributes you can set, CX and CY, that's the middle of your circle. Um, the point location that's the middle of your oops middle of your circle uh, and then the radius of the circle so the first one you have is just a plain circle <coughs> so if you don't specify a stroke then it's just going to give you a black circle right here black right there radius of 32 so the second one we got a radius of 32 and we make it red which is FF0000, and we have fill none. So that gives us a red circle with no fill. The third one is a green circle, and it also has a radius of 32. Stroke color is green, but this one we're gonna set the stroke width to 10 and fill none. So we get the same thing as the red, but the, the uh, line, the circumference around the circle is a lot thicker, it's th 10 pixels wide. The next one is uh, a blue, but no stroke. So you can just imagine a stroke going around there. You're not seeing it. So this is going to be like a little bit smaller than, than that. It's just filled inside. You don't get the outside around it. Um, and then the next one, so you can also do a stroke color. Stroke, we're going to set to orange. And then we're going to set stroke width to five. And then the fill, we're going to do purple. 8000FF. So here we get a orange circle with a purple fill. And then the final one, we're going to do a radius of just 16 and stroke of, uh, what is this, magenta. And then a fill of cyan. So a little bit smaller right there. So close this. Circles. So that's what we have here in our HTML. Same thing that's on the slide right there. So let's take a look at it in a browser. So yeah, here's our five circles right here. So you can go in here and like if I, if I want to make the green uh, red, then you can just go over here to circles. Here's our green one. Just change 00, zero FF00 zero zero to FF. Zero, 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 save that. Reload a browser, now it's a red circle. Um, if we want to make it 
like thinner. We can set the th stroke width to two. Save that. Refresh. Now it's only two pixels wide right there. Um, so the next one, no, I didn't get time for rectangle, so that's, that'll be, uh, an extra size for the student. I didn't do text either, but I kind of got text on this slide here anyway. So here we got Nox, K-N-O-X, red K, green N, a cyan O, and a, uh, magenta x so this is all about scaling and rotation um so yeah to uh write the letters where is it oh okay so i'm actually i'm not using writing text i'm not using this, the text method i'm using i'm just drawing each of the characters with lines and then <laughs> for the o i'm using <laughs> using a circle so you can use a specifier so you can group uh commands or tags together so we got this nox in a group g id equals nox again that's kind of similar to css where you can use an id tag so yeah so the first three here is the red x the second three is the green n the next one is the cyan o and the last two are the magenta x so what the nice so what i'm demonstrating here is you can use the use tag and you can specify an X and Y coordinate and then use X links colon href, kind of like the href in an uh, anchor tag if you've done HTML standard href for like anchor tags. It's kind of the same here. Then you just use within double quotes pound and then the ID of the thing that you want to use. So this is pound nox. And then you can specify transform. So you can use like the three standard transforms that are like uh, in computer graphics, trans translate, scale, and rotate. Uh, so here we're going to, for the next one, we're going to scale it by two, two on the X and two on the Y. So that gives us the big knocks right here. And then for the next one, we're going to scale it two in the X and 0.5 in the Y. So it's going to be twice as wide and half as tall. So it's kind of squished down. So yeah, you can do some nice animations with this where you can squish things down, expand things, rotate things. So the next one, we got scale 0.5 in the X. So it's going to be squished in the X and just one, the normal size for the height. So it's just squished in the X by 0.5. And then the final one, we got to transform rotate. So we're going to rotate it by 45. And I think uh, the other positions are the uh, rotation position where it's going to rotate around. So this is going to rotate knocks in 45 degrees right there. So here's our scaling. Same thing right here. Uh, then if we look at here, and here it is right here. Knocks, 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 knocks. Um, uh, let's see. So I didn't, didn't get to everything that I want to do. So by the way, you can create these in Inkscape. I think I started an Inkscape demo. Yeah. So Inkscape is a free program you can download. I think it's for like Linux, Mac, Windows, most major platforms. So, so yeah, here I have a, a red circle fighting windows here. So here I got a red circle with a black outline. Here I got a green triangle with a light green fill and dotted outline. Here I got a blue triangle with a black outline. So this is just showing to do SVG, you don't have to like do everything by hand. You just go over here. I think you do save as. This is either save or export. Yeah, so I'm saving it as shapes. Inkscape SVG. Press save. So it already just replaced that one. So then if we go look at it, I think it's in presentations, SVG. Yeah, here's our shapes. And we want to open our shape with, let's say, notepad. So here you can see everything that created that 
SVG. So this is a yeah. So it is XML version one. Um, so yeah, here's everything that was used to create that SVG. So this is going to have extra stuff that you probably don't need, like all this Inkscape blah right here, and this got the like the definition of the page and everything. But you can see here we got our ellipse. So it does define different layers. But yeah, here's our ellipse. I'm surprised it doesn't have the color. Yeah, so here's our rectangle, our blue rectangle. Oh yeah, it does. So style, fill. So here's the red for the ellipse. So it uses ellipse instead of circle. Um, let's go back. And the nice thing is, I believe you can just open shapes svg can we open up shapes svg in a browser maybe it's all being presentations svg shapes svg yeah so you can access it directly in a web browser like this Uh, let's see here. I just completely pulled it out. Let's see here. Go back here. Shapes. Edit. Okay, here's our shape system. So the first one is our red circle. So it gets like really detailed down to like almost like a float value. Stroke color is black, all zeros. So yeah, like I said, it gets really specific. Um, and yeah, to create those, it's basically just use the circle tool like that. You can change the colors and the, the outline. So yeah, they got stroke paint. And change that. And there's a stroke style right here. So dashes, you can change it to solid line. Got the end caps for lines and things like that. So yeah, you got the circle, the rectangle, and I think the triangle is like a uh, geometry, stars and polygons. So yeah, there's our triangle right there. <laughs> so let's make it yellow. And fill yellow. Yeah, so now we got a yellow triangle. Oh, you can pull it out, kind of make it a star. A shuriken. I think there is a property where you can set the number. Yeah, so you can increase. Oh, that's wild right there. <laughs> uh, whoa, there we go. So you can actually increase the number of sides. Yeah, so that's just a quick overview of SVG. I want to do something for February, get something out, get, uh, just for the month for Knox Game Design. So hope, hopefully people might not find it useful, but at least as a starting point, people want to know, hey, I want to use SVGs in my game. I don't like pixel-based graphics. I want something a little bit more sharper. Or, uh, definitely like a lot of the Flash games, I think they use... They definitely use uh, vector graphics. I'm not positive those are SVGs, but maybe so. I'm not sure. But yeah, if you're doing something like a Flash game, uh, definitely look into that. Uh, so yeah, hopefully everybody uh, found it useful. And uh, yeah, hopefully have to think of something for next month. We've got a game jam coming up in April. So hopefully everybody will put that on the calendar. So till next time, th thanks everyone for listening and watching.